This video is brought to you by Big Bad Toy Store. Make your purchases through my personal link in the description to help out the channel. Furthermore, if you want to support me more directly, you can check out my YouTube channel membership for fun emojis and sneak peeks, or my Patreon. Links in the description. So, due to the modern magic that is 3D printing, we're now able to get these awesome digital fan-printed sculpts of pretty much any character the fanbase wants, and, and I stumbled upon 3D sculptor Sun Westkong's work, and I was immediately taken aback by it. Here are a bunch of other heads I got. I got um, Wesker from RE5 and um rebecca and i got barry and jill painted up waiting to be filmed for a video so all these heads are bought from a man james at daisho creations who's an absolutely amazing dude so um i'll put the link in the description to his etsy shop and you can take a look at the heads for yourself and, and i highly highly recommend you check him out so just for fun here is a uh, venom snake head from metal gear solid 5 i'm gonna paint up so um let's get on to painting i have a lot of projects coming up mainly with resident evil stuff but i'm still waiting to get some parts so um yeah we'll uh, do this for now so uh as usual, we're basing the head in Cadian Flesh Tone. I love painting anything that only has like one eye, because the eyes are always the most difficult part to get, and even if you make two really good looking eyes, the thing is they also have to be kind of symmetrical, and uh, that's usually where the main trouble pops in. But, but Snake here has an eye patch, so um, yeah, we're in luck here. I only need to nail one eye. This layer is not going to cover on the first attempt, so we'll just keep going at it. I'm not actually painting straight from the bottle, I'm actually wiping off like most of the paint on a little um, paper box I have behind the camera. So don't you paint like straight from the bottle, it's, it's gonna clump up too much. And here for layer 3, I think this is, and by now we have pretty good coverage so i don't really care too much about having everything like a hundred percent colored because we're gonna cover this in another layer of slightly lighter paint anyway but you want to at least have a solid layer in all the crevices and whatnot i don't really know if it's just like a touch that you kind of when i was starting out i was always really really worried about brush strokes and even though i'm just like really haphazardly kind of brushing all over the place i'm not really getting any brush strokes at all it looks really smooth oh there we go fully covered okay so now we have like a little bit of white here and uh we're just gonna take some of this cadian flesh tone again put it on here dip it in the white Blend it a little bit, a little bit more maybe. Actually, let's just take all of it, screw it. Just keep blending it out. And now we slightly, we lightly begin to just dry brush the entire head. It's not quite a dry brush because it's a little bit thicker, but yeah, it's pretty much a dry brush. You see like how I have like very subtle like shading throughout the entire thing like this groove here is a darker skin. And the reason why I like doing this dry brush is because you can kind of see different like tones all over his entire face like you see this groove here it's a like nat kind of natural looking gradient to um, the kind of darker cadian flesh tone so now it's time to do the eye thankfully just one eye and for that we have some normal white here and we have some light gray and um i kind of for comic book characters i think it's fine to use like straight up white but for more realistic characters i kind of want to go with like very light gray so we just mix these two colors a little bit and then we're carefully going to paint in the eye and normally i would also paint an eyelash but the sculpt is quite deep in there already so you get a kind of really natural looking shadow there with a eyelash would be so i don't really think we need to okay so here comes the nightmarish part especially behind the camera we paint the eye and uh, for starters we're just gonna paint in a dot to mark where the eye should be this is too small so we need to do more
Looks pretty good. Maybe I will do like a very, very faint eyelash now while I'm at it anyway. So you just kind of shade this area with black. There we go. It's quite subtle, but you can definitely see that it's like, there's like a faint black line that goes up here. You don't want it to look like makeup. Okay, there we go. So um, Big Boss, or well, Venom Snake in this case, ugh, uh, has uh, blue eyes. And for that, we're going to mix some electric blue and some grey, because I feel like straight up, like, blue is a little bit too cartoony looking. So, we just carefully paint here, and I completely ruined it, because the brush has far too much paint on it, as you can see. Okay, so this is where, actually where the, high, where the eyelash comes in. I can save it with uh, painting an eyelash, but I need to wait for this to dry first. So this part usually never really works out for me, and uh, probably even less so on camera. But I'm gonna try to fill in this part around the eye with some black. So the reason why it doesn't really work is because it's really hard to get like a rounded edge. Instead I got this kind of straight line, so it kind of looks like he's looking to the, to the side. Now it's more rounded around this eye area, but as you can also see there's way too much. That's way too much blue in the middle, I mean, so we're gonna have to come in with blue anyway, so. And hopefully this paint's still wet and I can still mix it, and I can. It's not like the cleanest looking eye in history, but I feel like it's mainly an issue if you're really, really up close. So every step in painting the eye can pretty much ruin the entire thing, but this is the last step, and uh, so therefore if I ruin this, it's going to be the most annoying out of them all. So we're going to do the little pupil, and we have to carefully place it in a decent spot, and I think we succeeded first try. Is he looking straight ahead or is he looking slightly to the side? Hmm. So it turns out I wasn't happy with eye placement, so I just kind of shifted everything inwards and uh, now it looks pretty good. Now I am uh, just uh, going to paint this little eye patch here and we are just going to go with straight Vallejo black. And I want to be really careful about not getting this black on the skin. The skin isn't really too hard to like fix if I mess up, but I'd rather not. This line is also really, really thin. I'm just going to do this line off camera. This is too hard. So I feel particularly masochistic and I'm actually going to try to punch in these tiny little stitches on the eye patch. Okay, so eyebrow time. We're gonna use this Vallejo Black Brown, and um, I don't really like when eyebrows kind of look like one big, like, thick line. I prefer doing it in, like, a more subtle way, kind of like... It's almost like a dry brush, but with, like, lines, I guess. So... We just do, like, keep doing these upward strokes. And if you mess up or it gets too thick, you can just go back in with a skin tone mix. That way it also kind of looks like the eyebrow fades out into the skin and... There we go. Okay, so beard time. So Snake has a full-on beard, so let's just base it in the same um, Vallejo Black Brown as we did the eyebrows. And this is... A really, really watered down mix of the Vallejo Black Brown, and that's because we're gonna highlight the beard, and I don't really care about the bits that stick up because we're gonna detail those. So we're just gonna quickly go over the entire hair, 
nothing really to it. So in like very very broad terms, most of it is finished, but as you can see it's lacking a lot of character, it just looks kind of plain and boring. So this is where Reichland Flesh Shade comes in. So Reichland Flesh Shade is a, uh, basically a paint wash or, well, shade paint, and uh, it just helps darkening skin. So some here under the eye, under the eye too. And then for all his scars... And we're gonna clean up everything here anyway afterwards, so don't really worry about being too perfect with it. And Reichlin Flesh Shade also makes for a very good lip color if you just... So I don't really like how, like, it looks really good from this side, so it's clearly the eye that's an issue. So I think I need to darken around his eye a little bit more. So like the fle the Reckman Flesh Shade did like alright, but I'm gonna go in with some, it's like a really really thin like wash slash dry brush, even though those completely contradict each other, of um, dark brown. And basically what it's gonna do is it's just gonna make the area around the dark, make the area around the eye a little bit darker and moodier and... I don't know what it is, I don't, I don't think the shape for the beard is like completely right. I'm following the sculpt line but... I don't know, it doesn't look quite right. I think that actually did make quite a big difference. Okay, so with all this um, Reichland Flesh Shade over the uh, scars, we're gonna dull them down a little bit, because as you can see they're a little bit too thick so i feel like just like a slight dry brush isn't really enough to completely cover it and it just kind of tones it down a little bit Hmm, I kind of like how this, like, makes the skin tone a bit more interesting to look at. I'll just come back to the skin tone in a bit. Now we're going to detail the beard a little bit, and for that I'm just going to do like these. I could be doing a dry brush, but I want to uh, do some tinkering with the beard anyway, so... So, like most heads I paint up, I don't actually have a body for him, but uh, this red skull will have to do for now to showcase the head. Like, seriously, don't mind it. The head is too big for this body, but I needed something. Anyway, let's take a closer look at the head. Anyway, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I um, had my reservations about the eye side. Like, I think this looks pretty much perfect, and this looks a little bit rough, but then... I don't know, I kind of just like how it turned out. I've been uh, practicing a lot with like shading around the eye area, like kind of natural shading. And I think this really gives some more depth to the entire thing. Furthermore, I added some gloss varnish to the eye and the lips, but for some reason the, the it's actually not really picked out by the, the light. But to sum everything up, uh, he's based in Cadium Flesh Tone and then um, 
He has like a dry brush of a lighter cadian flesh tone on top of it. And then the hair is all Vallejo dark brown with a lighter brown dry brush on top of it. And um, some nice little stitching detail on the eye patch as you can see here. Uh, I don't really know what else to talk about because I assumed you watched me just paint everything live. But yeah, I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. Once again, I got this head from my man James at Daisho Creations. Oh, I highly, highly recommend you check out the link in the description for him. He has some excellent stuff for sale. Yeah, hope you like this little video and uh, I'll see you guys in a bit. I won't scatter your sorrow to the heartless sea. You're all diamonds.